Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on Sense Labs, We're our, our channel here. We've got Gabby Zavada. She's going to get going in here a little bit, having a little bit of fun. And you're going to find a little bit more about Gabby in just a minute. So just to give you a little history on Gabby, Gabby was actually uh, went to school. I'll start off where she went to school at. She went to school at Ringling College of Art and Design. That's actually real close to me. She's not there anymore, but in that area, but I'm in Florida. So she was out here with this area. And Gabby has done quite a great list of some, just some amazing stuff. I mean, she, let's start off with Digital Domain. She worked there. She was a Viz Dev artist. She also worked at Disney Mobile as a production artist, Spin Master, another Viz Dev. We got DreamWorks in there, the consumer products. So this woman is very talented, very gifted. Um, we also have Sony Animation and Huvo Tune, is that right? Huvo oh, it's a, a Huevo Tune? It's like Huevo a Mexico tune. studio. Yeah, gee, yeah. let's see, Mexican Colombian descent, aren't you? So um, yeah, so she's also worked at Disney TVA and she's currently at Disney Digital, Digital Network as the lead biz dev artist. So with that, what I wanna do is turn it over to Gabby, let her have a little bit of fun. There's no time limit on our end right now. We got extra time. So uh, please feel free in the chat area to go ahead and ask your questions and we'll go from there. Gabby, take it away and I'll let you take over the screen. Hi everyone. Um, here, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, continue. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. You're good. We got it. Okay, cool. Cool. So I'm just going to draw. Um, I kind of have something in mind, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so I have something planned, um, something from my heritage, um, like a, a Katrina. So um, it's, it's used a lot in um, Mexican culture um, for Dia de los Muertos. So I'm going to try to do something like that. So let's get to it. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm here. And we'll just see how this goes. Gabby, how long have you been doing this? I mean, you got quite the resume. Um, um like professionally, I'd say about a little over, I guess like 10 years now. Um, but ever since I was like five or so, or whenever I could pick up a pencil, like that's that's when um, it all started. I just never put it down ever since. And then my mom saw, uh, or my parents saw that, um, like, oh, this girl likes to draw. So let's yeah. just give her, let's give her everything that we could give her, like to coloring books, to, um, I don't know, everything. There's so many pictures of me that my mom's taken when we go to like museums and I'm just sitting on the floor, like drawing or, um, I remember taking, uh, uh, doing a art contest in school. Um, there was one where they offered one for, I think it was like humane, the animal humane society. And it was like to draw, um, like, uh, how do you take care of animals or something like that? Can't remember exactly, but, um, I remember I won it. And then the prize was to like, take a car ride with like one of the people that like rescues animals but little to my uh to my information is that um we wouldn't be picking up a lot of live animals so um <laughs> that was very interesting and I was like oh okay well this isn't what I thought I had in mind but um it was still fun to, nonetheless to like learn the process of like what it's like to rescue animals and you know and all that but um do you have, do you have a yeah. warm up routine, something you like to draw when you're warming up? Uh, nothing in particular. Um, though I probably should, I probably should. <laughs> um, but it, I don't know. It depends. Um, like right now, um, even though her legs are not going to show up, I just put it there so that, um, I have a guide of like how long the, the length of the dress should be. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, what other stories do I have? Um, there was a time when um, I used to love Space Jam when I was younger. And I had like all these coloring books, uh, 
of um, you know Space Jam. And then there was one one time when um, it was missing, and I was like, "Where is it? Like, I can't find it anywhere." And it turns out um, my mom took it so that she can make a birthday cake out of it and have Lola Bunny be on it. And um, it was such a like. I was crying. I was also crying because like when I had the cake, I didn't want to cut it. I don't want to cut into Lola Bunny's face. <laughs> um, but that was like such a fun memory that I still like remember till this day. Um, and uh, did you get yeah, your coloring so, book back? Say that again. Did you get your coloring book back? I did. Um, I was like, well, thanks, mom. Now I have it back. But yeah, I don't know. It was nice. It's it a nice little sentiment that my mom did. Hmm. Um, let's see. I don't know any other kids stories that I have like that are like art related. Um, there were times when we had to go to like fancy restaurants. Um, I would have, they would pack like a backpack full of like crayons and again, coloring books or sketchbooks because like that would keep me entertained. So I would just keep going. And then high school, I took um, AP studio art and um uh that's when I like I thought like okay maybe I can do this for a living but I didn't know exactly what like I wanted to do either animation or who knows like I didn't know too much of the art world back then um and um, so I found Ringling um because there was a poster on one of the the doors and like the art room and I was like what is this and then and so I learned about that and then so I applied there because I saw that they had a computer animation program. And uh, so I applied. Um, it was the only school I applied, actually, um, really? because, <laughs> OK, fun, fun fact. So like um, the deadlines for a lot of the art schools were in when was it? I think it was like early spring and I missed the deadline. So I was like, oh, Ringley has a later deadline. So let me try. <laughs> uh, so uh, thankfully, um, uh, I, I got selected to to go because otherwise I'm like oh that was pretty lucky I think how um, did you how did you get from ringling to digital domain um uh, okay so uh during like our senior year or like towards the end of the year every year they had um recruiters come in and like review portfolios or interview people and um one of them was uh digital domain and that was in my senior year back then and um uh, so I went in there and, um, uh, it was Aaron and I think it was Chuck, Chuck Williams. And they looked at my work and like, oh, we really like your work. And, um, we think you'd be a great fit here. And I was like, really? Okay. Um, mostly because like what I was working on the legend of Tembo at the time. And, um, if you know a little bit about that film is that it's very realistic. Um, but my portfolio has none of that but um, they saw some potential in me and, and for that I'm forever grateful um, that they gave me the opportunity to work on that. And um, yeah, that's how I landed there. Um, um, but during school, I didn't get any internships. Um, I tried, but um, it just wasn't the right timing or I just didn't have enough in my portfolio, which was fine because I just ended up working on my thesis. Um, like I spent time working on my model and um, really like polish and work on, on my on my thesis and, uh, and that was fun. One, one of the questions that just came in from Wolfie Girl 360 is what's your favorite animated show? My favorite animated show? Hmm. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, I haven't really watched a lot of like cartoons lately, um, but like in terms of favorite, um, I really like the classic, uh, like Saturday morning cartoons. It was a lot of, um, what was it? Bugs Bunny, obviously. Bugs Bunny, all Thanks, those. Um, what else? Um, Powerpuff Girls, I really loved that. Um, when I was in like 12, when I was like around 12 or so, there were these online forums where you can draw and um, uh, kind of like uh, the Magma Studio thing where people can draw together. So it was kind of like that. And it was a community where we could draw Powerpuff Girls. And so everyone used to draw that a lot. And um, that was one of my favorite shows. Um, what else was there? And Gabby, I was gonna say, you did something a few minutes ago that I, I spotted. You actually flipped her. 
So yes. were you looking looking for just to make sure your comp composition was correct? Is that what uh, yeah? So um, I do this a lot, and a few people kind of know this. So like um, I flip it just so that um, I can see uh, I spot mistakes, see if like things are balanced. So like right now you saw me like flipping it and switching it and moving arms here and there, um, just so I can get like a better silhouette. Um, so that's the purpose of why I flip it. So I can check to see like what's right, what's wrong, and just to see if like the the character is balanced. Yeah, um, I, noticed, I noticed that's what you did the first time when you flipped her was you kind of repositioned yeah. her a little bit. And I thought, oh, that's interesting, and I knew yeah. you were probably doing that for for just proportionate, right? That was yeah, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the purpose of that. Um, let me see what else. Um, well, I'm drawing. Another, another question ahead. for you. When Valerie Gonzalez is asking, when you do you get any reference for pieces, or is this mostly from your imagination? Um, I do use a lot of reference, mostly because I think everyone should use that reference because you never know what little detail you might miss. Um, I have one on the side of like um, a lady that has a costume, um, but it's not like one to one. Um, where um, it's just it's fun to have reference because you just never know what little detail you might miss. Um, like I didn't realize like the, um, you can add like, uh, accessories or just little details. Um, kind of like when animators, uh, do video reference, um, they do that so you can find little nuances they can add to their animation. So essentially, yeah, um, it's the main reason why I use reference. I could, I have an imagination, but like, you know, it can use a little boost from time to time. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you, you've got a very kind of specific style which people love and that it's you're right it's it's not realistic it's more cartoonish and if you will i mean she's great and that's one of one of the things it's like there, there was a question asked her a little earlier by chelsea that said are there any shows or movies that inspire your style so like if you like your style is specific and is there anything that inspired that um you know i don't uh i feel like just you get inspired from like a lot of things that you see from like a lot of peers and films, but nothing really specific per se. Um, I just really try to play with like a lot of shapes recently. Um, I do feel like the style has evolved. It, maybe it's just me, but um, it has changed a bit throughout the years and, and um, you, you kind of just keep going um as you keep growing and learning and trying new techniques and um so it always changes there's never like a set um style that just sticks I feel I don't know at least in my work maybe people see like the same thing over and over and that's okay too <laughs> but um yeah I don't know now obviously you're using a stylus of some sort because there's mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of pressure there as you're as you're working um, mm -hmm. And your brushes that you're choosing, you're, you're choosing like this is a nice pencil brush that you have here mm -hmm. that you work on. And is this, I mean, where are you getting your brushes from? Just generic um, ones out of Photoshop, or you're creating your own? Um, this one, I can't remember who I got it from, but it was a while back. Um, this artist just had had, um, I think, um, Lowish um, mentioned this artist a long time ago. But you can see there's a lot of like papery pencil texture and I really like that because it just kind of mimics um like like you're holding a real pencil um like right now I'm just using like a tablet um but it still feels like I'm drawing on paper um so that's why I like using this brush but um another other types of brushes that I use um there's ones I've collected throughout the years there's like ones from she and Kim um they're also really wonderful um and then just really generic, um, basic brushes. Um, and I really like, I switch from brush, like, like crazy. Like, I don't, you don't even know by the end of like, uh, my illustration of like what I used. Um, so I just like see and feel and just see if it goes. Nice. Um, so now you're darkening in a lot of those lines that you actually originally drew. Yeah, um, a little bit. Um, I like to keep it, the sketch loose, but um, also going a little bit and refining some things here and there. But um, eventually, like this will go away. Um, 
I know a lot of people um, like to like refine the draw the doodle. I mean the the sketch, um, but uh, I think there's just different ways of doing it. I don't know. There's times where I also just refine the sketch. So there's never really a set like guide of like what I do. It just ooh, go with the flow. Now you've had some quite interesting jobs, like with some very interesting companies. And the way you just, just applied, is that what you just applied for those positions? So did they come looking for you? Um, most of the time, um, they come looking for me, like very grateful for that. Um, a lot of times they just, uh, a lot of times um, they find me like during conventions um oh. like for Wonderground gallery that one i was found at a convention um i didn't know who was like visiting my table at the time i just remember seeing an email come in like oh hey i found you at like the um what convention was it um i think it was wondercon um and that's where they find me there so it's like whenever i table conventions like you never know who's gonna show up so it's like put on like your best face yeah be nice to them right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Don't be mean to anybody. You never know who's showing up. Yeah. And that goes for like the industry too. Like I remember in school, um, that was like one of the first things they told us. Like um, we were sitting in an auditorium and they're like, do you see all the people sitting next to you? Like um, someday these could be your coworkers, your bosses or, or anything. So it's like, you just be mindful of that um, as you keep going. Because like, as soon as you graduate here, you're going to end up running into each other a lot more than you think. And it's true. Yeah, you're right. So, right. A lot of people. wrinkly people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blessed with the fact that I've got ringling. I've got full sale here too. And scat is not too far away. So <laughs> they're all right here in Florida. That yeah. area or the South, I should say. Um, let's see. Okay. Now, obviously when you go to the line art, you're going to switch to a new layer yes and the same thing with color um uh, yes it depends if like i'm doing something like professionally then um like for a studio that i have to deliver then um i make sure like everything's organized because if it gets handed off to someone else um i don't want them to see like my mess so um i try to organize it and make it as easy as possible to be able to edit um because that's like it's the worst thing when you try to get a file and then you open it and it's like, what is this? What's, what's, what happened in here? Did a tornado happen in here? Um, so I always try to like tidy up the file before I hand it off to someone. I you learned, have a favorite, oh, go ahead. Do you have a favorite art book or a book about artistry? Um, my favorite art book I'd say um, that has a lot of wear and tear is Art of Tangled. Um, I like went through that page that book like so many times um, because it just has like really beautiful gestures and Glenn Keane, like um, the work that he did on that. Um, it's just so pretty that like, I just, I referenced like from time to time, it's just really beautifully done. Um, so that's one of my favorite books um, that I reference a lot. Hmm. Funny thing about Glenn, when I grew up, I grew up in Southern California and I went, I was living out in Canyon country, which is out by magic mountain. And, uh, my best friend lived next door to Glenn Keane and we, and I, you know, nobody knew who he was at that time. They were actually, he was, he, talk, he was talking to us. We'd always go over to his house and just chat. Cause we knew he was working at Disney. He was an artist and we were just chatting and we just chat about stuff. And he was telling us how he was working on this new movie called little mermaid and yep. he just went through the whole stuff and it was really kind of funny because i mean it's like if i see him i'll say hi to him because like it's it's hilarious because like we were just going over there for fun you know there's it's glenn king so yeah yeah i think that was actually one of the movies that made me want to become who i am today or at least i think oh, so um so yeah the little mermaid i saw that and i was like i want to do something like that i just didn't know what um, and then, so like I went to study animation, um, and, uh, turns out animating is hard. So, um, I actually steered more towards like just the, um, illustration side because I just found that to be more of like what I liked and, um, or I get, uh, yeah, what I liked. Uh, 
Um, so right now I'm just like really just blocking in color for her skin. Now, I'll, I'll point out that you made your initial sketch. It's now the top layer. That's how we're able to see this color underneath it. Yes. And you added that gray layer and turned that on so that we're actually seeing a background. Yeah, the, the reason why I have the, the, the neutral gray is because um, I don't want to strain my eyes. Um, and also it like, just keeps like the, the color neutral. So like if you put any other background or anything, it kind of helps balance that. Um, but mostly I just, I want to protect my eyes. <laughs> um, so I keep that on a gray. 50% gray? Yes, 50%. Right now it's just somewhere along those lines. It just kind of eyeball it. <laughs> Close. Um, let's see. And then whenever I color like my pupils or the eye whites, scleras, I don't know. Um, I don't like to go full white color. I do go like an off white so that like the character's eyes don't pop out as much and they just kind of blend nicely together. Um, same with like uh, the blush, like I kind of like, so I pick like the main one and then move it, move the slider a little lower. And as you can see, it kind of grabbed, wait, hold on. Let me color pick that. And then, so you see that's the color and then I slide it down a little and then you see like the blush. So it's kind of like makeup. Um, so I just lower it a little bit and then you can see like this is kind of matches the skin tone. So that's like, that's my reds. All right, so since you, since, since you said skin tone, this is actually a really good question for that. Um, matter of fact, uh, Valerie's having some problems getting skin tone right. How, can you talk a little bit about picking skin tone color? Um, yeah, um, let me see. I just really like to work with darker tones mostly because it's like, you don't see a lot of that. And, um, but usually I, it depends if I'm working more in like the cool side or like the warmer side. So like right now I'm gonna work on like the warmer side of things, um, but it depends if like the lighting is like um, on the cooler side, then I'll just switch to like, I know somewhere around here, um, but then metal a little bit with like the warm tones. So you can see like in the little swatch is on the cool tone and then here's like the warm tone. Um, a little hard to explain. For me, it's like, I just kind of eyeball it a lot because um, I work with a lot of like characters with skin tone um, with like different uh, darker skins. So um, it's become like a second nature thing now to me. Um, I don't know if that kind of helps um, answer things. Um, usually I don't like when characters kind of look kind of ashy. Um, so then always try to like, even if it looks like a little lighter or a little ashy, I always like, um, you can fix it with um, on the color balance. If you wanted to just move the slider a little bit to like the reds and a little bit of the yellows and you got like a little bit of the warmth back in there. Hmm. Same with like, if you want to turn it cool, um, I'm sure this isn't the right way, but this is just like the way that I do it. Um, and then there's like, you move it a little more towards the blue, then you have a little bit of the cool tones um, while still maintaining um, the darker skin tone. Yeah, in Photoshop, there's there's gotta be 10 different ways to do yeah. the exact same thing, right? Yeah, there's so many different ways, so many like art rules, um, but art rules I think are meant to be broken. So um, I just do what feels right and um, usually turns out okay. <laughs> In my eyes, I guess. Sarah's asking an interesting question. What advice do you have for improving shape language in character design? You have such lovely shapes, graphic shapes in your work, she says. Um, I just really focus on making sure the character, you can read it well um, in silhouette form. So I talked about this a little bit on a previous thing where um, I just like to make sure that like you can read if this was in silhouette form. Um, let me see. I'll just do like a quick cutout or reference. Hey, you're moving so fast with that. That's amazing. How are you doing that so fast? Um, what a question. What a question. Um, you're it's a sense labs tablet, aren't you? I am. I am. Um, whoops. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I use, I'm using the sense labs tablet right now. Um, and, um, it's very smooth actually. So I can move pretty quickly. So there's not much of like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, Lag. like a wiggle actually. Cause like my hands can be shaky. Um, so this is, I'm surprised that I could actually like, um, uh, where is the button? There it is. Um, there. 
see there's like barely any like shake maybe there's a little bit but not so much so very handy As you're doing that i've got another good question for you yeah um natalie's having problems with loose she she has rigid poses and she's asking is there a way to loosen up a rigid pose or what do you do to kind of loosen it up a little bit um let me see hold on let me continue this one for a sec and then i'll get to that one um so you can kind of okay. see um oh let me see pretend there's like pockets because these will be cut out later um so yeah i just try to make sure that like you can kind of read like there's a character in there so that's what i focus on and if it if um there's more where i can improve like i could definitely improve here um so you can break up the arm a little bit more um and things like that so that's what i focus on um let me see we're talking about what was it <laughs> um rigid rigid poses. rigid poses okay yeah so um yeah there's a lot of um things you can find online for like um taking like um life drawing classes or sometimes if like your sketch is like very rigid um there's like little tricks that um I used to do where you like you can take your sketch and then just like warp it a little and then like you can see you can kind of push the pose a little more like I probably could have done that too um but um we're not going to do that today <laughs> um but usually if the, the pose is too stiff you can do that um, or just like start over. Sometimes it's just the pose isn't working. And then so then I just scrap it and then um, save it for later or, um, you know, do something else. Or sometimes I Frankenstein pieces from like one layer to another and then kind of create um, a new pose with that. That's more, um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, this is more, um, more dynamic, I guess. So that's the tip I have for that. Yeah. It's a little unconventional, but it, it does the job. Now, obviously you're you're pretty well known, obviously for your digital work. Do you ever do any traditional work as well? Medium, you know, traditional stuff? Chalks, yeah. actually really get out the old chalks. And I know. Um, there was, there's times where um, I um, just get tired of, staring at like a screen so then I pull out like my gouache paint sets or um the latest thing that I did um just to mess around was like um playing with clay um so like the most recent thing I did was um I made like these figures uh, made out of clay and then I painted them it was just a little it was something different for me to like explore and just have fun um because it's like if you're not having fun then then like what's the point um so uh, I try to do that from time to time. Like, I'm sure I'm going to take a long break um, uh, cl coming closer to like winter and just, you know, practice more on the foundations of like, like traditional paint and all that. Um, let, but, let me ask, I'm curious, what the, the silhouette that you created before, what was the purpose of her up top there, that top layer? So um, I just wanted to see that you're able to see like the character um oh. that like let's say so like let's say she's in a scene with a lot of different characters i want to make sure she's the one that stands out from the crowd um i want to make sure um you can just see like what she's doing like you can see she's holding a parrot um and then like there's like a headpiece and um i can improve like on um breaking up the arm a little bit and uh so yeah that's the purpose for me um to see the silhouette do you ever squint when you're drawing? Um, uh, so I don't think I need to squint um, because um, I should probably wear my glasses. So um, I guess I naturally <laughs> squint without it. Well, I, I was kind of referring to like, you know, some artists will squint to kind of look to see what's Yeah, but I feel like I don't need to squint yeah, because not, I already kind of can't see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I think it just happens naturally without me even trying um yeah don't do that you guys you guys just wear your glasses um i don't really need them make like screens, when i don't really need them when I'm, right yeah um yeah when i'm drawing um here like i don't really need them right now it's only like if i'm driving at nighttime or something for like distance um but um yeah i, I don't really usually uh squint because it just does it not for me naturally yeah, yeah. 
So let's see, what else? What else can I talk about? Uh, maybe some of you are probably wondering like what the meaning of like um, a Katrina is, um, uh, like for day, to, day of the dead. Um, so um, a Katrina represents uh, the good humor that we keep when we're facing difficult situations such as death, um, as well as a big com uh, commonality uh, between the rich and the poor, because like we're all gonna like go away on the same, um, at the same time, not the same time, but you know, like uh, um, there's no uh, judgment of uh, who's, who's gonna be next. It could be anyone. So um, that's like the reason why it's celebrated a lot um, in the culture. Um, so, and it's also Hispanic Heritage Month. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that into this. And I realized that I'm painting her skin and I totally forgot to like draw in like the, the makeup that she has. So um, we're gonna work on that later. <laughs> yeah, I got to carried away with like adding like the blush and everything else, but it's okay. So, so Wolfie Girl's asking again, she goes, sometimes I unconsciously match my facial expressions to the expression of the character I'm drawing. Do you do that? Um, maybe. Um, maybe unconsciously like you were talking about um if i'm trying to do like a like a i don't know like an open mouth or something like that then i would totally do that or there were times where i just don't know like what the pose looks like like in the hand and i'll take a picture of my own hand and then reference that um and there's no shame in that um so um yeah I it's a reference right mm -hmm. it's, a it's a reference yeah now you create a new layer. Is this a new layer that you're working on? It yeah, is. yeah, new layer. Mm -hmm. Put it underneath it. No. How do you how do you bring do you bring lighting in as well for shading? Is that what we're working on here? Or is you're just coloring in? Um, right now I'm just color blocking um, the dress. Um, the lighting doesn't happen until the very end, wow. um, mostly because um, I do mess with like the colors. Um, I usually use. Um, like a solid adjustment layer for color um, on my professional work. Like let's say, um, let's see, like that. Mostly because there are times where like, oh, can you make that a little bit greener or something? So then I can just double click it and then adjust it without right. having to um, mess with the entire layer. Um, but for like, for fun purposes and um, I don't really use them. Um, just keep things loose or try to um but there are times where I'm like oh i don't really like that color so then i regret that but um it's okay there's nothing like a little like color shifting um what is it like um uh, color balance or the hue um thing can't fix very simply And sometimes I use a lasso to just fill everything in, but then I end up um, going in with the brush and uh, adding some texture in there because when you use a lasso, then it's pretty rigid and not don't like that. So I try to add some texture in there. Let's see. I don't really know like um, what I'm planning with like the colors of her dress or anything so I'm just kind of winging it and um, I like to bounce around a lot in different parts of the character um, if I get bored with one area then I have something else to play with um, so, so yeah. one of the questions we got, I just got is what's the best way to learn animals uh the wrong person to ask that no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. there's a parrot um, in here <laughs> yeah there's a parrot in here um really just l the zoo um i remember when we were working on tembo we used to take trips to the zoo um, um there was one in um i think it was in tampa or something like that at the time because the studio was in uh, port st lucy and so we did a lot of sketches there or um we would go to yeah, disney world Larry. Lowry's or Disney. Disney. Yeah. Disney, Animal Kingdom. Yeah, Animal Kingdom. So we would do that. Um, 
and then yeah so it was it was a lot of like life drawing for animals um but i like to look at animals and just kind of break them down into like simple shapes kind of like the bird or the parrot i have here um and play with that hmm. you know first you drew those two first two circles and i was thinking oh looks like <laughs> Um, let's see. <laughs> what else can I talk about? There's a lot. Um, in terms of what colors I'm picking, I'm just kind of eyeballing and see like what kind of goes. You, you're just walking. Do you normally put the colors on their own layers? It looks like you do. Um, Sometimes like, like if it's like a big piece, then I keep it separate in case I change my mind later. Um, mm -hmm. So for this, for sure, I'm definitely keeping it separate. Um, yeah. Um, what else? All right, why'd you zoom out? <laughs> why did I zoom out? Um, it's also why I have like the navigator here on the side so I can see um, if it's readable, readable um, at a small scale. Why? Um, because a lot of times the art that I do is like for mobile. So I wanna make sure that things read um, well at a small scale because you're moving your phone. So you wanna make sure that um, things that you want to be seen are seen. I knew there was a reason. Yeah. Weird reasons that just kind of. No, these are all little tips that these <laughs> yeah. all, all letting artists get a chance to understand how you do what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things like I don't realize that I that I do, but it just, I guess it makes, I don't know, it just makes sense. It comes as you were working a lot on in pieces. Um, let's see. What color should the parrot be? Um, probably a green one. When I was younger, I had, um, when I was in Mexico, uh, I had a parrot um, that I trained um, and um, I would put it in a little Barbie Jeep car. <laughs> um, and so we're gonna go with like the parrot that's usually found in Mexico. I don't know like specific breed, but um I can't remember, I had like some red and I think some, let's see, can't remember, but it was very distinct. And every like Mexican household that I could remember would have um, this specific breed of parrot. Um, and then I got sad because at some point we had to like go away on vacation and we um, had uh, my parents' friends take care of it. And then they left the window open so, oh, no. just, so the parrot oh, no. flew away and I was so sad. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was not fun, but oh well. <laughs> but I had a lot of parrots growing up. Like when we lived in San Francisco, I had like four or five cockatiels um, at a time. At the same time? Yes, at the same time. Um, why? Awesome. I don't know, I just loved it. And then, um, and when we were in LA, um, even younger, my dad used to love um, just all kinds of animals. So we had uh, a dog, um, two cats, uh, a canary, um, a fish, a, a few fish tanks. Um, we even had piranhas. Um, yeah, I, they're probably illegal. Um, I don't know how he got them, but <laughs> he had them. And so I remember that. And then there was a point where I asked on Instagram, like, like uh, I did like a, is it truth or is it like false? And um, one of the questions was like, did I ever own any piranhas? And um, people voted no, but I'm like, aha, I did. And then I had a picture and they were like, oh my gosh, you did. I'm like, yep, I sure did. What'd you feed him? I don't know. I don't want to know. I was too little to understand that. Um, so yeah. All right. So I got another good question for you here. How is this, this is from Nacho Queen. She says, 
how do I get rid of the same face syndrome? I literally feel like I drew, every person I draw, doesn't matter if it's a child, a teen, adult, old, looks the same because of my art style. How do I get rid of that? Yeah, and I struggle with that. Um, I feel like I've been pushing that a bit more in my work recently. Um, so I just really like play with like shapes, like like really like circle and just like fill it in with like different um, positions of like the nose and mouth try different eye shapes um like a long long face like maybe has a small nose and then like the mouth is like all the way over here and then um smaller eyes so it's it's really just like just make a shape and then place like your your eye your like your facial features in different places and play around with it like there's just do it I don't know um uh, same with different noses like there's always always like the tiny little noses um but like there's different ethnicities out there you know and so it's like um you know like have the little larger ones um and then like there's different eye shapes so there's like you know like the cat eye and there's like little little beady eyes um so just really like push the different shapes and just if anything like it's I think it's a good exercise like just draw a lot of shapes like squares um, like long ovals um triangles and just fill it in with um, different placements of um eye shapes and mouths and noses and even ears um and see what you get um so that's what I've been doing a lot more um to break out of like those same face syndrome same face mold um and I think it's been helping. Um, and same with like body shapes. Um, you know, like um, there's like, you know, the, the petite, um, there's like, there's just a lot. So I feel like also play with that, like make a lot of different shapes and then just fill it in and um, uh, see what you come up with. And that's, that's how you can kind of, um, it'll be hard from the start. Um, um, I'm not, it's, it's never easy, but once you get like the hang of it by doing it more and more constantly, um, it'll get a little bit easier as you go, as you practice more. One, one of the questions is interesting. It's probably more of a Photoshop setup, but um, when you're moving around, it, I'll, I'll just share this because everybody's not quite seeing it. When you're moving around right now, it's normal Photoshop. For some reason, YouTube is picking up your cursors black. So it looks like it's oh. filled in, but it's got to be something in the streaming process here. It's not normal. Oh. So people were asking, well, how'd you get the black cursor? And it's like, well, it's oh. really not black. Yeah, it's not black. Yeah, I, it's, I'm actually seeing the brush shape itself. So yeah. I don't know. The normal yeah. Photoshop, just so, so everybody knows that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the normal. Um, it's a streaming yeah. glitch. It's a streaming thing. Yeah. Weird. It's interesting. Yeah, no. I know. I mean, like, I, I, you kept catching my eye too. I like going, where's that black cursor coming from? It's like, how's your paintbrush <laughs> all black like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they're like, oh no, no, it's normal. It's yeah, normal. it's probably like a, a graphics thing. Yeah, it's YouTube. Yeah, we're doing YouTube live. It's YouTube. I'll just say that. Got it. <laughs> a couple lighting questions about lighting and how you're choosing the lighting and how do you do shading. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them is 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 there a good lighting scheme scheme shorthand that's prevent uh good for presenting a character designs um i like to display mine in like uh depending what side i want to feature most then i would put like the lighting hmm. there so like i want to feature like this side of her face so then um i'll focus on adding lighting on on like this side um and uh it helps like the character pop out more yeah. um so that's, it depends like where I want it. So you can kind of see, I'm just putting in like little places where I want the light to hit. Um, so maybe even a little bit of the nose. So you can see um, it, it kind of makes a character pop out. I don't know if that helps. I don't know if that answered the question, but I think that's the approach I would take it in. Yeah, so if you want it, get the lighting to be on the other side, then it's the same thing. Um, so you would, put more on the side um but to me like the most interesting is like 
this is the side because she's looking this way. So I want to put the lighting on her on that particular spot. Hmm. But you can light it in different ways. Um, um, there's no rules, you know. So um, this is just another example of where I would put the lighting um, on her. Yeah. So that's one. That's another. I don't put two, <laughs> um, unless it's like I guess a huge spotlight. But I just keep it to one. Keep it simple. Do you, Do you um. Do you, uh, this came from a question from Mitchell. I just, I'm kind of trying to reword it here a little bit. He's trying to restructure his portfolio, but he's, he's considering changing from concept art to character design. And is, is that a wise choice for him? He's, um, if he's, he's really enjoying making the characters. I should have said that too. Yeah. I mean, um, it's never too late. Um, I've seen like engineers switch to like, to storyboard or just so I feel like it's never too late to switch to something else that you're passionate about um and just know that like for a character designer you're going to need a lot of poses and a lot of turnarounds a lot of expression so if you're ready for that then um I would include a lot of that in your portfolio mm -hmm. um just because like that's what you'll be doing um the majority of the time hmm. so it's never too late yeah, I saw a question earlier about somebody wanting to do animation until they took Maya. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I almost failed, like, the first year in school because I'm like, I just, it wasn't clicking. Um, and then I even spent a lot of time, like, after classes to um, ask my teacher if he can help me. Um, and thankfully, um, he did. So, um, yeah, um, I almost gave up. But it also helped that I had a friend um, that we, like, um, took turns in like taking notes like if I wrote down notes during a lecture she would too so then we would combine both our notes and then just kind of like work the problem together so it helped that um, I had a friend that um, we just kind of like helped each other that way good idea yeah otherwise like I can't retain that much information a lot especially for like art history oof I really struggled with that one um, I <laughs> I'm ashamed, but I did fall asleep on a lot of the classes for like um, art history, just because like I just wasn't retaining it. Um, but my friend, um, she would help me a lot um, during that time. Um, man, I really should have, I could have to draw the paint on her face and now I'm too lazy to do it. Um, but we'll come back to that later. Is Photoshop your go-to drawing package? Um, Photoshop, um, Procreate. Um, what else do I use? Mm, in terms of like digital, that's pretty much all I use. Sketchbook um, or sketchbook? Mm, no, just just those two. I feel um, a lot of them have like, they do a lot of the same things. So I'm like, oh, do I want to learn another program? Probably right. not. Um, but um, I've played around with like a few things. I think it was like Adobe Fresco at some point um, for like a couple minutes, um, but I'm, I didn't do a lot of the painterly stuff. So I didn't find that one to be for me, um, but it's great for a lot of people that do that because it has like the texture that's like paint. Um, so I can see that being helpful for that type of artist. Yeah. But um, I just stick to, to what I know from like when I was like a teen. <laughs> Yeah. had like what was like the very first photoshop like um photoshop expressions or something like that um it was like one of the free ones that you would get in a cd well, um photoshop yeah. actually originally was called photo hut i actually worked huh. for me and i was the first very first photoshop national specialist and uh it was called photo hut before it was 1.0 photoshop so wow yeah i know see That's, the more you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah this this you're, you're gonna kick out of this uh uh mitchell responded and said all righty thank you the one character in my portfolio has one single pose so i got work to do yeah definitely um yeah do a lot of poses do a lot of expressions have it interact with things um create like a fake scenario and then um go from there like let's say like the character is uh 
um, let's see, maybe the character um, is running late for something. What is he missing from his stuff? So then he, maybe he's frantically looking for something. Um, maybe he forgets his key. So he's like looking for something. So you got like poses there um, that can help jumpstart ideas for like creating um, a character be more believable by giving it personality. This is Shannon with Sense Labs. I was recently on the sketch to animate session with Travis Blaze and Wink Winkler, and they went over how important storytelling is in your portfolio. So I had a question of how important is storytelling to the development of your characters? Um, also, like, tell them hi, because um, I work with them, and they're really nice, and they're awesome. Uh, Agreed. They're <laughs> They were so fun. Yeah. Honestly, I think I remember hearing a story about somebody changing your tire one, yes. day, tire one day, wink. Yep, he sure did. Um, my my car at the time, um, I think there was the, you know, the tire blew out and I'm like, I don't know what to do. And the area we were, where we were in, there was kind of like very spaced out. So there wasn't a lot. Um, anyway, yes. Um, so I think it's very important just because it makes your character more believable, like I was talking about earlier. Um, so the more story you can add to it, um, the more fun and um, memorable the character will be. Um, Nacho yeah. Queen's asking, I spent about five hours a day studying and three to four hours for fun. I want to be a character designer. Is it okay that I'm using that much time studying or should I spend more time studying? Uh, Did you study a lot? No. <laughs> um i feel you like don't, you don't want to make your work you know all yeah all work like, and no play right exactly like you don't want to make work be like a like a burden or like like a like a what do you call it like a um like you don't want it to become a job so um i don't i try not to like overdo it with like drawing or studying mostly because then you'll get your brain tired and so like I try to like do other tasks that's not that um so I would recommend taking breaks so um like go out and safely um and do some people sketching or just like watch a movie or just I don't know um something that's not like you're not completely 100% devoted to um, drawing all the time because then that's also not healthy for the brain so it's like you want to have a good break um, and that way um, you can uh, have new experiences um, and then your work will come out even better but for some people that it works out great um, but for my specific needs um, I do um, take breaks and not um, over try to overdo it if that helps Mm -hmm. right now I'm just blocking in some patterns um and usually like the dress the, the typical standard dress um just is um you know like it's uh well that's not a good question let me see maybe this one um has like the straight lines, but I try to make it interesting by having having some like curvatures um, to the pattern just to make it more interesting. See, what else can I talk about? Is there anything on here? No. Just gonna group it and see how it looks. Whoops, I missed the layer. This is Shannon again with Sense Labs. I was wondering when you feel most inspired. Um it comes in bursts. There's never a time where um I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna do something or um it really depends like if I'm really inspired by like a film um then I'll probably sketch along with it I think like the last time that I was really inspired by was um the Mitchells um forget the full title um <clears throat> but by Sony released by Netflix 
Um, I really loved how different and unique that movie was and how charming a lot of the characters were and in like the environments and just like everything about that movie it just it was very inspiring because it's like I haven't seen that be done a lot and um, so that was one that I was felt really inspired by um, recently um, but inspiration comes in bursts there are times where I don't do anything um, and that's okay so it just means like oh I need to take a break and so I take the break um, I try not to force it because the more you force it it's not going to come out and trust me, it's not going to, no matter how many times you do it. So I just like put it down and go do something else, play some video games. I don't know, um, go eat some yummy food because um, you never know when the inspiration is going to hit. Um, so um, maybe you can eat a meal and then somehow that strikes like a, um, an inspiration for a character later. Um, like there was a time when, um, so I have like my own little shop. Um, I wanted to design like a bucket hat. And um, so I thought about like, well, um, what if I turn this into like a character? So then um, what I did is like, I just drew like a little doodle, but then that doodle turned into like this character that like kind of represented the essence of like what I wanted this bucket hat to be. Um, so um, I give this character like a personality by giving her a hat. So it's like, see how like, you never know where inspiration is gonna hit. Um, if you're designing something that's totally different than what you th thought you wanted to do, um, it just happens. So um, it could happen at any time. So it definitely inspires me. When you're out <laughs> yeah, and about- Yeah, food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're out and about, do you take a little sketchbook with you or do you use your phone to snap a shot of something if you see something that's really- um, I, I, I'm probably like the, one of the worst artists that doesn't take like a sketchbook with them or take any drawing utensils with them. I just, if I go out, I'm not there to draw. I'm there to just do my normal human being life and just like do whatever. But if I see something that's kind of like clever, then I'll probably take a photo. Like if it's a, um, um, there's a friend that she shared a photo, like it's kind of related, but not, but, uh, she shared a photo of, um, uh, um, a scene in Little Tokyo and I really loved the lighting of that and I was like hey can I borrow that and I do like a color uh, like a, a study on it she's like yeah go for it so then um, that's an occasion where um, if I see a nice lighting scenario like in the environment then I'll take a photo and then like paint it later um, so that's the only time when um, I would like get inspired um, or take art with me in a sense so just if I see something then I'll take a photo um, but other than that I don't take any drawing tools with me. It's just my phone and my keys and my wallet and that's it. <laughs> I do admire people that do take that and like sit down and pull out a sketchbook and paint or doodle, but I can't concentrate and do that. I have to like do that at home for some reason. I just find it to be like my safe space or my safe place to do that. I don't know. What else? What else can you do on that character there? She's looking pretty good. Yeah, um, I don't know. Um, I'm just playing around with uh, different patterns that I could do on her and I already forgot what brush that was. So uh, maybe it's this one, sure, why not? Um, <laughs> so, okay. So she's taking some shape. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, I would like to know, in Sense Labs, and I'm sure everybody watching would like to know, like the specific elements of your heritage that you really try and incorporate into your art. I mean, I love it and see it, but I'd like to know, you know, your point of view and where you're coming from. Um, I just really love to see other characters that look like me um, and then just show that, like, if, let's say a little kid comes across my art, I want them to be able to be seen I'm like oh that character looks like me like for me it was a character in um, the Little Mermaid the tv show um, there's a character it was a mermaid named uh, Gabriella and so I was like oh wow first of all she has my name second she has my skin tone so um, when I saw that I was like that's pretty cool like there's other characters that out there that kind of look like me so um, that's like where I come from in terms of like the type of characters that I make um, I try to like just incorporate a lot of like um, diversity um, 
just because not because it's like I'm, I'm forced to do it it's just like I want to um it just feels natural um so uh that's that's where I come from with in terms of like that and I just think it's important um as you know more kids uh watch a lot of stuff like online like on their phones um it's just important that they're you know that they matter very cool Remember, oh, she spoke sign language, right? That's what the question. Yeah, was. yeah, yeah, yeah. She did a, a lot of sign language, um, and I thought that was really cool because, like, I don't think that's been done a lot in a lot of shows. So, um, even having like a like a disability, that's pretty cool um, to be, you know, to show that um, on a kids show. Like, it's it's great, um, and I feel like that should be done a lot more. And I'm sure it, there's a lot of stuff in development that probably have that, um, and that's great. So, so the colors in this this drawing you, you're doing, it, it, they all kind of kind of revolve around. The, I mean, it's it's a great composition for that. How how are you choosing your colors? I mean, do you have a specific have, set that you just go to? Are there your go to colors? I would like to answer that question myself because honestly, it just comes to me. I don't know. I really play around with. Um, just to see like what's missing, how can I balance it? But it just kind of happens. And I wish I had that answer. Like, I wish I knew why I, why I do, like why I pick the colors that I do, but I really don't. But I do know that um, I love color and if it exists, I will use it. So um, most definitely um, I will, if there's an opportunity for me to sprinkle in some like bright, colors then I will absolutely do that um, so like let's say like when I lived in Mexico um, or visited <clears throat> there's a lot of buildings and houses and just like little shops that have like colors everywhere and I'm like why can't we have that here so then I just try to add that into my own work because it's like if we have those colors we might as well use them um, so I think that's one of the reasons why um, I use it um, uh, it was probably loud for a lot of things, but I'm just like, if we have it, just use it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll point out real quickly, if you guys look on the right, lower right area, Gabby has about 17 layers, I think is what the last one I just saw was added with 17. <laughs> yeah. So I'm she, not even... <laughs> she uses a lot of layers for everything um, just to kind of keep the colors separate. So that's a nice little tidbit there as far as what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, it's a lot of layers, um, but then eventually they all kind of compress down. Um, yeah, we're talking about shapes. We talk about lighting. Talk about the silhouette. Um, whoops, what is that? Okay, yeah. So um, a lot of different layers in case I change my mind, right? And then it's yeah, easy to it's adjust, up, right? Mm-hmm. And also save. I just I just save my file. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'm doing something, and then all of a sudden Photoshop will want to crash. So um, save often. So that's a, another big tip. I would highly, highly recommend. And also save different versions um, because you never know if you save that file and then you try to open it again, then the file could be corrupt. So save multiple versions at different times throughout the day <laughs> as you're working on your piece. Yeah, Photoshop is not as rock solid as it used to be, but hey. I think there's just, there's a lot of programs running, um, like uh, 3D Elements, I believe, um, and things like that. Uh, let's see. What else, what else can I do? Um, I don't know, she's are, looking we, are we at time? <laughs> yeah, we're, are we good? yeah we're, we're beyond time, but we're good. Whoops. We're not time. That's okay. Oh, goodness. Like I said, we didn't have anybody behind us, so we're all good. <laughs> we, can, uh, we can go ahead and start to wrap up. I want to thank yeah. everybody. So thank yeah. you, Gabby, for doing such a great job. That's really kind of nice and fun to see all this and to learn a little bit about your experience and how you did this. So that's that's really cool. So Gabby, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys for all spending time with us here. Let me just switch over real quick and share my screen real quick. 
share. And I'll try to finish this at some point. Yeah, will you keep working on it? Is that what yeah. you mean? You'll just keep working on her? Yeah, I'll keep working on her and then I'll share her later. Very cool, very cool. And well, again, thank you guys. Again, take a look. We've got uh, our special in the in the chat area there. If you guys would like to figure out uh, using a pen tablet, one of our pen tablets, we've got a code in there for 10% off of our uh, the pen tablet medium bundle, which Gabby, you didn't even show that you're using that little bundle. Oh, no. here it is. <laughs> As everything falls. I was going to say, where's the quick key remote that you have that I know? You I know. Too. Here it is. <laughs> so she uses our stuff for fun. And that's, that's one of the creative parts about it. So thank you guys. Thank you, Gabby. Oh, their pin case. Isn't that pin yes. case amazing? Yeah. It's very like heavy, um, yeah, but yeah. like, like a good heavy. And then it comes with like two pens. So that's yeah, great. Yeah. We, we decided to include two pins with what we do. Which pin is your favorite? The thin one or the thick one? I'm using the, the thicker one. The thicker one. Yeah. 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 It's always been a favorite. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you guys. Appreciate it. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. We've got a few more sessions still to go today. And then we have some even tomorrow as well. So again, thank you, Gabby. I really appreciate it. Right. And we'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you.